Does passion drive success? If so, how? And if it does drive success at all, isn't that just a natural trait in any individual? In fact, there are two pathways that enable success through passion and also one that might be highly detrimental for you if you don't know how to manage it. If you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button so that we can get more information like this out to more people. It will go a long way in helping me in my mission to create more enlightened individuals. So let's deep dive right in. In 2003, Valorant et al. discovered that passion can be broken into two types. The first one, harmonious passion. The second one, obsessive passion. In the meta research done by Curran et al. in 2015, they found that there were four areas in interpersonal research that relate to passion, namely well or ill-being, motivational factors, cognitive outcomes, and behavior and performance. As it turns out, harmonious passion is positively associated with positive intrapersonal states, such as a positive flow, positive emotions, and positive performance overall. Conversely, Obsessive passions tend to be associated with negative emotions and plenty of ruminations that can cause a drop in performance. Obsessive passion seems to also be associated with a higher level of vitality. What this means is that if you can mitigate the negative interpersonal reactions towards obsessive passion, you might be able to actually influence a positive impression of you simply because of your heightened vitality. It has been known that passion tends to drive motivation positively so theoretically speaking, if you've got a high level of energy, you're more likely to achieve success, isn't it? However, this is now mitigated through the Pygmalion effect. So let me explain what the passionate Pygmalion effect actually looks like as a pathway towards your success. In 1968, researcher at Harvard Medical School, Robert Rosenthal, and school principal Lenora Jacobson did a study where they took two classes of average performance. They assigned two groups of teachers. One group of teachers was primed to expect that the students would do badly. The other group of teachers was primed to expect that the students would do positively due to their precocious nature. The result was that the students' results were skewed towards the teachers' expectations. In other words, if you believe that the students would perform poorly, they did perform poorly and vice versa. What this means is that you need to also pay very close attention to your positive expectations of your employees if you're an entrepreneur with a team. If you're working as a professional, you also need to have positive expectations of other people. This is one of the reasons why, even in intimate relationships, whenever we start to imagine negative expectations of others, we tend to create a self-fulfilling prophecy anyway. If you are a coach, have positive expectations of your clients. If you are a leader, have positive expectations of your employees. What's more important is if you are an employee, have positive expectations of your managers and supervisors so that you can create positive effects utilizing the Pygmalion effect. So there are four things that demonstrate the Pygmalion effect. Anyone who has these four things are more likely to demonstrate positive expectations, namely feedback. If you're giving more feedback, you're likely to show more positive expectations. The nurture effect. If you're more likely to want to nurture others, you're likely to have positive expectations of others. Third, emotional support or sympathy. If you demonstrate a higher level of warmth and sympathy towards the individual, it's more likely that you have positive expectations of that person. And finally, attribution. If you attribute good performance towards the person's character and the person's competency, you're likely to have positive expectations. And if the performance isn't as good as expected, you're likely to attribute conditions outside of the person's control as a result of your positive expectation. Let's take a look at this diagram. In Wang et al., October 2022, in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology, researchers from Harvard found that there were two pathways to success, leading to four key outcomes. Number one, relationship with your supervisor. Number two, job satisfaction. Number three, the willingness to invest in work. And number four, burnout. Self-rated passion was positively associated with the first three and negatively associated with the last one at a significant level. In other words, the higher your self-rated passion, the more you have a positive relationship with a supervisor, the more you're likely to have job satisfaction and the more you're likely to invest in your work. And of course, the higher your self-rated passion, the less burnout you experience. Now, this should not be surprising to you because if you've got a high level of energy, all of these four factors are likely to be an outcome. But what was an interesting mitigating factor that skewed everything even more closely towards a person with high self-rated passion was the fact that there is a higher likelihood that if I accomplish an outcome, 
that all get positive feedback from others. This factor, known as the positive feedback factor, skewed everything towards a virtuous cycle. In other words, if I perform well and you give me positive feedback, I'm also likely to increase the relationship with my supervisor, increase the positive relationship with my supervisor, is also likely to increase my job satisfaction, willingness to invest in my work, and also reduce my burnout, possibly due to the support from my supervisor. So this highlights something very interesting, which is the interpersonal effect due to the Pygmalion effect. Now this interpersonal effect can be interpreted in a variety of ways. We all know, for example, from neuropsychology studies, that familiarity is created as a result of mirror neurons going off. If I notice your high level of energy, it's likely to impact me positively, and therefore I'll view you positively. What this means is that whenever I have a positive level of passion, I can actually influence others interpersonally to have a positive regard for me. Now this completely changes the game. If I can find ways to balance my obsessions, by making it harmonious within the workplace, it must mean I have to pay attention to three key applications. Number one, I need to increase my passionate energy. We've talked about this at length in self-management, personal regulation of emotions through the use of physiology, cognition, and self-talk. You can find this inside my playlist on mindset. Number two, more importantly, to increase and amplify your interpersonal skill sets. Skill sets such as being able to communicate, empathize with others, to resonate with the values that they have at the same time. These are crucial and I have yet to cover many of these, but I'll do this in subsequent videos. One video that you can tap into is the video that I did on networking skills that can also enhance your interpersonal persuasiveness. And the last one is to utilize behaviors that demonstrate passion in whatever it is that you do. I have a few theories. Number one, you could utilize the right kinds of behaviors within a video that you're doing to increase, for example, conversion rates or to enhance your employee journey by demonstrating that you are indeed passionate about people and about your vision and mission. When you do this, it's far more likely that employees will want to gravitate towards you and it's also more likely that customers want to work with you at a higher level. Secondly, it might make sense that you're utilizing words that demonstrate this passion. You're no longer just using generic words, but you're utilizing powerful words that engender some kind of emotion within your writing. This is very likely to then translate into a person's interpretation of you as the author of an article or of a landing page to increase your copywriting effectiveness. For all it's worth, even if you don't convert, at least people have a positive brand image of you, and that could also spur positive business results. Whatever the case, this has to do with your own employees and the people that you relate with tightly. We need to understand the undeniable effects of passion on your co-workers and how that can also drive a huge amount of results, creating a far more positive environment within your work culture. Hopefully, this gives you a tool set of how to apply passion at your workplace to increase your entrepreneurial drive to enhance the energy within your team and to help the team deliberately increase their drive, energy, and also a positive culture. If you found this helpful, please click the like and subscribe button so that you can receive notifications on my future videos. I hope that you share this so that we can elevate the rest of our community to a higher level beyond suffering so that we can take actions for abundance in our business, life, and our relationships.